Hi, this is Valerie Getch with a tutorial on viewing your images in Lightroom. Lightroom gives you a number of options for viewing your images, and there are lots of ways to change your view and the information you see along with your pictures. Understanding these choices will help speed up your workflow and help you in making decisions on what images you want to keep and what you want to do with them. We're here in the library module, which is where you will view and sort your images here in the center preview panel. We're looking at the grid view. You can access grid view anytime using the keyboard shortcut G from anywhere in Lightroom, or if you're already in the library module, you can use the grid symbol on the toolbar, which is right here. In the grid view, you'll see the thumbnails of the images for the current folder or collection you have selected. These images are part of a quick collection I created, which you can see here under the catalog panel. This is a temporary grouping of images that I put together for this tutorial. You may want to create a quick collection, say for a slideshow, or to edit, or perhaps to send to someone. Right below that, you'll see Previous Import. Lightroom gives you a quick way to see the last images that you imported. So I'll go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that this is the last image I imported. You can also see your previous imports by scrolling down to the breadcrumb bar and clicking on this little menu here, and there you can access your previous imports. So back to our thumbnails. I just wanted to remind you that you can use this slider here in the lower right of the toolbar to adjust the size of your thumbnail view. So the thumbnail itself is the picture, and the border around it is called a cell. If you click on the J key, you can toggle through the various cell styles. There's actually three of them. Um, the, th the thumbnail with no information, which is the current view, or by clicking J, you can see some information. This is called compact view, and you can see that the file names are here and also a few more details. And if I click J again, you can see even more information. Starting in the upper left corner, this is the index number or the cell number, and as you can see, they're all chronological. Right below that, is the crop image dimensions and just below that you may see a flag. This white flag indicates that this image has been picked as one that I want to keep. You'll see that the image next to it has is unflagged and so that little flag is dimmed out. The upper right shows the image name and right below that the extension. Some of these images for example, this one here has a little arrow, and this indicates that some metadata was changed and it had not been saved yet. So if I click on this little arrow, it will give me this little message asking if I want to save the changes. So I'll go ahead and click Yes. And you'll see that that little arrow disappeared. You'll also see that these images have a gray dot in the upper right-hand corner, and this is to indicate that they're part of the Quick Collection. I'm going to go back to my previous import to show you that this image is not part of my collection and you can see that it's just kind of a, um, a dimmed out circle. So if I wanted to add it to my collection, I would simply click on it and then you'll see, going back to my quick collection, it appears here. Now moving on to the bottom part of the cell, you'll see these little left and right arrows. These you can use to rotate your image either counterclockwise or clockwise. And then you'll see that there are star ratings that may or may not be applied to your images. And if you wanted to change them, you can use the toolbar right here to change any of your ratings. You'll also see that the image has a purple color label attached to it, which you can see more prominently here. And this is just another means of organizing your images. So I'm going to select this image and I'm going to show you the difference. When it's selected, you'll see that the border becomes a lighter gray to indicate that this image is selected. And you'll see that the purple label is now narrow. So if I deselect that image, you'll see it goes back to the full um, thicker purple. Okay, now I've selected three additional images. You'll see that the thumbnails are a slightly darker gray than the first image, which is the active image. 
but they're all selected, so any changes I make to one of them will apply to all of them, not just the, the active image. So for example, if I change the color label to green on this, it will change all four of them, even though this image here on the left is actually the active image. Finally, you'll notice that these images here are a darker gray yet, and this indicates that these images are not selected at all. So one thing you need to remember, be careful to know exactly what you have selected, or you could accidentally apply changes you only meant for one image to a bunch of them. Make sure you have deselected your previous images before selecting new ones. To deselect all your images, hit Control D. To select all of them, Control A. To look at a thumbnail in a bigger size, you can use Loop View. To get to Loop View, select your image, then either click on the loop symbol on the toolbar, which is right down here, or double click on the thumbnail itself, use the shortcut E, or simply hit the space bar, and this gives you a larger view of your image. If you look at the navigator, which I'll open up here on the upper left, you'll see that it is set to fit. So the image is zoomed to fit um, full view in your screen, so nothing is missing. If I click on Fill, this makes the image even larger. If I click on 1 to 1, this brings the image to 100% in full size. And then you can see here in the navigator that this little box indicates where you are in your photo, what you're looking at. And in your main photo area, in the preview area, you can see that the mouse is now a hand and you can use that to move your image to a precise location if you wanted to take a closer look. If you want to view your image even larger, you can change the zoom level by using this little drop down menu here and zoom in even more. Click on your image again to zoom it back out. You can also use the Z key to zoom in. Click it once to zoom in and click it again to zoom out. To move on to the next photo, you can either use the left and right arrow on your keyboard or the film strip, or when your mouse is hovering over an image in the loop view, you can just scroll your mouse and it will move automatically to the next image, like so. Anytime you want to return to the grid view, just press the G key. Now that you have an idea of the various ways you can view your images in Lightroom, you're ready to categorize and sort them. Lightroom offers a number of different ways of doing this as well, which I will show you in an upcoming tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe and the like buttons below. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. In the meantime, go out and have fun with your camera, and I'll see you back here soon.